Welcome to another episode of the Monday Mindset. We are so excited that you all have joined us. We are right here in the beginning yeah. of a brand new season, mm. Occupied. What is filling your mind? This is a conversation where we challenge ourselves to occupy our minds with truths, not lies. Brandon, excited to be a part of a new series. Took a little break there, but now we're back. That's right. Rocking and rolling back again. And, and back in better. We are trying to make it better. That's right. Every every season, man. <laughs> would you have really thought though we would be as far along as what we are? I don't know. I really don't like no, probably not. <laughs> it's wow. crazy. Yeah. We've done how many episodes? This now? will be episode 32 that are legit. Yeah. Probably about 10 before. more before yeah. that that so. were uh that were little little interesting. Yeah. That's to crazy. Say the least. But that's crazy. It is. Hey, what it started rolling. It did. What started as just an idea during the pandemic has now carried on as what we hope is still helpful content and right. fun conversations with us. And man, I think really helping us too yeah. in a lot of ways. We yeah. need this. If anybody, you know, whether or not we have any listeners or not, man, we need this stuff, but we yeah. do, we do believe this content is real and relevant because as we talked about last week, dude, everybody is struggling with their mindset in yeah. one way or another. And we're addressing those each week to once again, occupy our minds with truths, not Lies. And today, we are going to occupy our mind with peace. Mm. Can't even say it loud. Peace. 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 Yeah. That's what we're going to occupy our mind with today. That's right. Peace. So what is peace, Brandon? I had this fun thought. I was like, well, what in the world does that even mean? What in the world does peace mean yeah. right now? Yeah. I think for me, a, a peace is just like, um, <laughs> right now, the lack of anxiety. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just like the lack of anxious thoughts and worries, and mm -hmm. it's just having that. Um, it's 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 a feeling, but it's so much more than a feeling. Uh, is what I've learned is it, it's really like it living in peace is almost like a lifestyle. If that makes sense. Oh, I know yes. we're gonna be diving 100%. into it and talking about it, no. but yeah, so. I love the analogy. Whenever you start looking at it from this this new angle, this is where we would kind of want to set it up, is that countries would oftentimes be at war all throughout history. But we see that even right now, we are at a time of peace. Yeah. To where we don't have combating forces going against one another, trying to essentially win out in some way or whatever it may be. Some force trying to overturn another force. And we would say that there is now peace. When you aren't at war, you have peace. Now, here's the struggle. That's tough to attain in any context, right? Yeah. It seems like there's always a war waging on our mind. Yeah. I feel like we're always there. And so how can we still have peace even when a war is waging on our mind? Well, you, see, you just said it. The absence of mental stress or anxiety is where you see peace defined, uh, a stress-free state of security and calmness. I like that one. That comes when there's no fighting or war. Everything coexisting in perfect harmony and freedom. I don't know. It seems a little too far-fetched, doesn't it? <laughs> it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, you're like, we're going to occupy our mind with peace. And it's hard to even define peace. I know. <laughs> Especially when you read it like that, you're thinking, no. Too good to be true. Too good to be true. <laughs> hey, we're going to fight that. Today, we're going to be given some simple techniques about how we can fill our mind with peace. We talked about this last week. We got to hit it home again. Me and Brandon are not psychologists. We are just people who love Jesus yeah. and trying to figure this whole thing out um, in our own lives. And we want peace. We yeah. want to occupy our minds with peace. And so as we go through these techniques, these are some things that we have experienced, but these are also some new techniques and things that we're looking to apply in our lives to help us do this. Um, so... As we go through these, I hope that one of them connects with you. I hope and pray that there's one that like really resonates and, and really hopefully through this conversation, we can begin to see, okay, peace really can be attained, but there's some things about it that, that we need to be revealed. Yeah. We need to learn. So number one, mm. how do we attain peace in our life? How do we occupy our mind with peace? It's my favorite one. You got to tuck in that mind. You know, tuck it in. Tuck do, you, it in. do you like being tucked in to a bed? Nah. No. I'm a little claustrophobic. Okay, yeah. So, I get it. I get it. 
You know, just imagine your mom coming, you know, coming into bed and saying, good night, honey, giving you a little kiss, tucking in them covers. And you're like, oh, that's cozy. See, Abby, that's every cozy. I, I go to bed later than Abby because she goes to bed early for yeah. work. And uh, but every night, come tuck me in. <laughs> every single yeah. night. Hey, come tuck me in. Say yes, ma'am. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I'll be like, got gotcha. you. I'm going to tuck you in. <laughs> so where we make this context, we're trying to tuck in your mind. Yeah. Make it cozy. Make it nice and, mm. and loved and comfortable all before bed. All before bed. Now, here's the here's the connection here. I've got two boys, Asher and August. Could you imagine me right before I said, boys, it's time for bed. But before we go to bed, here's Saw 3. And we're going to watch <laughs> about 30 minutes of Saw 3. And then I'm going to tuck you in. All right. Sound good, boys? Could you imagine what that would do to my kids? No. That would give them nothing. There would be no peace. I wouldn't even have peace. Yeah. I have vowed, I have vowed to never watch another Saw movie again in my life. I couldn't tell you the last one I've seen. No. Yeah. I'll tell you the last one I've seen. To me, they could like every single Saw movie could burn and never exist ever again. Dude, they messed with me something awful. What's the last one you've seen? there's like moments that I remember. I mean, I genuinely stopped watching them after the one where they were all locked in the home. I never watched that one. Yeah. I still like vividly remember the woman putting her hand up in the, it was like this glass box. And as she began to pull her hand down, nah, they're like, nah, I don't mess with that. No, I don't mess with that. The woman jumped into like a big thing of needles and had to I find the needle in the haystack. Oh my God. All those things. I'm like, no, but imagine Imagine showing that to my four-year-old or three-and-a-half-year-old before bed. Dude, you ain't getting no peace no. thinking about I ain't getting peace no. thinking about that. No. But the connection is <laughs> we got to tuck in that mind. Yeah. Tuck in that mind with some peaceful thoughts. Yeah. Now, the real-life connection would be oftentimes we don't do this. No. Right? We it's don't rare. do this. It's rare. Like, what's your bedtime routine? Um, I mean, honestly, honestly. So I always um, either watch – I watch something that's uplifting before bed every single time. Okay. Every single night. Um, or do something I love. Like I do something to end my day on a good – on a high note. Tucking in Abby. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, so I, I do that and then drink some water and then go to bed every single night. Wow. So – Oh, Look at I'll, you. You're yeah. such a saint. Look at you. No, <laughs> Just kidding. no I go to bed late. <laughs> there you but go. I do that every night. Man, like, you're, you never, like, get into a Facebook scroll or an Instagram scroll or... <laughs> Not really. Like, it... Pretty disciplined in it. I don't, yeah, I don't really do... Like, I, I usually watch something uplifting. Yeah. Because I, I've dealt with night terrors before. Oh, Yeah. A yeah. lot of nightmares, so I had to yeah. get on a routine. I got you. <laughs> so, I got you. Yeah. Well, like last night, I'm trying to just place an order, get some groceries, emails. If you haven't checked out emails, everybody needs to. But sometimes emails just don't work out very mm-hmm. well. And so it wouldn't go into the cart. I spent 30 minutes trying to get my grocery list done and ready so somebody else can go shop for my groceries and just bring it out to my car. <laughs> and 30 minutes. And it's it. kept saying that it – it, there's no pickup items available. I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? So basically there's a glitch in the app. Spent 30 minutes. I was furious. And that's how I went to bed, man. I went yeah. to bed last night with a just troubled mind and heart over my grocery pickup. That's something small. That's something so small. Oh, yeah. But it's like... Now, whenever controversy hits, man, come on. I go to bed angry. I go to bed yep. anxious. Yep. I go to bed, oh, worried. Now, I get... It, like, I'll worry myself. Like, so it, it's really a lot of times this will happen if I, like, get worried or mad, like, earlier. I shut down and I just go to bed. Like, I'm just going to go to bed. Yeah. Even if I don't stay there for the night, I'm, like, I'm just going to bed. And I shut down. So, yeah, it's not healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy. It's not, help, not healthy. Not healthy. That's for sure. So that's tip one. Yeah. Tuck in your mind. I like that thought. Just tuck it in. Make it cozy. Mm. Don't go to bed with an ear full of trouble. Go to sleep with a mind full of peace. Mm. And we get to, we can determine this. So yeah. I love like the simplicity of this because it's just like, okay, you could probably put your phone to bed at nine. Just grab a nice little book or just don't do anything. Just sit there. 
or yeah. put on a show. Maybe that makes you happy. Yeah. Um, fill your mind with peace before you go to bed. That's yeah. step one. That's what I, I try to cut off social media. Like I, I try to do an hour before I go to bed. Okay. To yeah. Shut off and yeah. Give myself like time to just chill. I because yeah. you go you don't you never go to social media with the intention of becoming mad. No. Nah. But oftentimes you leave with probably a thought that isn't positive, but probably I, negative. Honestly, when's the last time you left social media happy? Yeah. Yeah. Like happy. When I luck like- into a good <laughs> prank video and then I'm like, that was funny. Yeah. Uh, but most of the time, no. Then I'm just being mad because I wasted 30 minutes just looking at something stupid. Yeah. I don't know. I feel guilty and all that. Number two. Number two. This one's tough. This one's tough. Yeah. Empty your mind. Yeah. Empty your mind. That's step two. Empty your mind. Empty your mind and receive peace from God. Now, here's a very, very important point. Peace from God. Let's get to that just a little. The chief struggle in gaining mental peace is the effort of revamp, revamping your thinking to the relaxed attitude of accepting God's gift of peace. So I love this picture of just emptying your mind of all negativity, of all bad things, of anger, um, goodness, anxiety, depression, whatever it may be yeah. that's flooding your mind. But, dude, that is tough. That is tough, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. And I think it goes back to um, this right here of being occupied. What's occupying your mind is one. Whenever we say empty your mind, I think what we're saying is what you just said: empty your mind of the negative thoughts and negative beliefs and the lies and anxiety and the worries and the stress. Empty your mind of those things, but don't empty your mind completely. For me, uh, going through a lot of things, I tried to empty my mind, and what happened was I found out. Uh, was the empty mind is the enemy's playground. And I emptied my mind of all truths of oh, all, and yeah. I would just empty my mind completely. Did like what complete happened. purge. Yeah, and so I would try to empty my mind and be like, all right, I'm just not going to think about anything. I'm just going to And man, it, like we talked about in last episode, things crept in. They would creep in, yeah. and it... I had zero control over it because it wasn't occupied by something else. Yeah. So I think that we need to empty our mind of, negative things, but uh, it's hard to do. So how do you do it? And I think a lot of times it's not just uh, emptying them, but replacing them. So you replace the lie with the truth and the Bible says the truth will set you free. So I think that that's one of those things where it's like, man, fill your mind uh, to empty it of those negative things. Bingo. Point number three. Feed your mind. Yeah. That's it. So we love this process. We're just saying, okay, don't empty it completely, but then immediately begin to fill it with creative and healthy thoughts. And the feeding of your mind, we're going to go right back to it, man. Just give the Bible a try. Yeah. Give the Bible a try. Dude, there was a story of a man. He was so tense, so nervous. He was with his buddies at a conference, and everybody could see it written all over him. Like, they knew he was nervous. I think that's what's so true. When peace, when you aren't living a life with peace, people begin to see it written all over. You either, people either see peace or they'll see everything else that you're carrying. Like, like I think it's just so evident. Like, if somebody is full of peace, you can tell. Yeah. If they're anxious, nervous, you can tell. Yeah. So it's written out. It's, it's incredible how it is expressed, but he was with his buddies and they could see that. And he draws out this, you know, this old school looking medicine bottle, poured himself a large dose dose. And then they, his buddies asked him, say, Hey, what's the medicine? What's the medicine for? And he said, Oh, it's something for nerves. He said, I feel like I'm going to break in pieces. The pressure I'm under makes me wonder if I'm going to just crack up. You know, I try not to show it, but I suppose even you fellas have observed that I am nervous. And he was just trying to take this medicine. And I think that there's like, dude, there's so many things that we try. Yeah. That we try to like feed ourselves to try to get this negativity out of it or the nervousness or the anxieties or whatever is like, this is where we all come together. Every single person is like, yeah, I don't like the feeling. I don't like being this way, but the solutions in which people try, that's what separates us Yeah, in so many different ways. Yeah. I think that so often we try and try to numb the negativity. Okay. We don't really numbing try to, yeah, let's we, talk, yeah, we don't really try to uh, get rid of it. We just try to numb it and make it seem like it's not there. 
And it's like, well, if, <laughs> have you ever gone through a haunted house? And, try not to anymore. <laughs> and you, you've walked through a haunted house, though, and you just try to act like that thing's not there so it doesn't scare you and it doesn't. It's like, all yeah. right, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. And then, and then it, it gets but, like Yeah, this. it's closer, 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 and you can't, yeah. you, you can't shake it and you're scared. And it's like, oh, my gosh, they sense it. And there's yeah. a, that's the thing. If you if you act like that, even in the haunted houses, the people in the haunted house they sense it and they're like they're scared and they they're acting like they're not. But I know yes. they're scared, so I'm going to get closer and I'm going to get closer and get closer. I think it's the same thing in our own life within within our mind and our mindset and uh, filling our mind and experiencing peace. Is we try to act like the negative things aren't there. We try to act like these lies aren't there. The the beliefs aren't there, and it's really a pride issue. But we just act like they're not there. Yeah. And we just keep on going, keep on trucking. It'll be okay. It's not there. I'm going to keep going. It'll keep going, keep going. Yeah. And we stuff, stuff, stuff until we eventually gush. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and that happens so often though in our own life that we try to, try to numb the negativity, block out all the worries. And it's like, well, no, replace them. Don't, you need to acknowledge them. Yeah. That's the first, yeah. Acknowledge it and go, you know what? It's real. <sighs> yeah. What can I do about it? Yeah. How can I do this? Dude, mine isn't necessarily to numb it to a point. Normally, the most stressful, the most stressful times of my life, I try to cover up with good food. Yeah. Good. I like yeah. in all honesty, it's just whatever I can get my hands on, whatever is sweet, whatever is that comforting. Normally I feel even more miserable. Yeah. But in that moment, there's like these little quick fixes. Yeah. And this is what you see is that like mine may just be with food, but others just have this replacement principle that says, Well, I won't replace my thoughts. My thoughts will be there, but instead of numbing them, I'm just gonna cover them. You know, and other exactly. things will come in that will maybe bring you comfort for moments. Exactly. But the thoughts still live. Yeah. Like, dude, this is like we're preaching, right? Preaching yeah. to each other. And like, this is just every single one of us, man, struggles in this way. And I think that that's why we struggle with it so much is because we do cover it up so much that it gets so deep in there that it becomes the root. Mm -hmm. We never want to dive into the root. We never yeah. want to get to the root of the problem. When in reality, the root could have been fixed a while back. But how can we dig deeper, get to the Don't root to. and replace it? Yeah. And oh. get... It's painful, dude. It is. Painful going deep. Yeah. Uh, so what we're challenging ourselves with, and I mean, really, you're talking about, you know, two people of the faith here that's like, we're trying to get this idea of giving the Bible a try. And I'll be the first one to say, dude, some of the hardest times in my life, the last thing I ever wanted to do was pick up that book. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to do. It's like, I knew within me that that was what I needed, but even yet it was just like, nah. I'm too tired and I really don't want to do that. I don't want to read. I don't care what the truth say, you know, whatever it may be. And even that is, uh, has been a tough one, but we're going to just take some time with it. And I think like, I'm just being honest with is like the times when I have though, the times when I have gone to God's word, it's, it's freeing. Yeah. It's freeing. And that guy that we were talking about in the story, his buddy was sitting there and he, he said, um, he said, you know, I used to have a nervous tick as well. I used to have all sorts of anxieties um, in a lot of different ways, he said. And I was had this one time that I was experiencing it just really bad. I was in a hotel room, opened up the drawer, found a Bible, and I just started to read it. And he just said, he said, and we're talking so he doesn't even believe in God. Yeah. But just found the book and began to read it. And then what he found was that what he was reading began to free him of what he was feeling. Yeah. And so he encouraged everybody. He said, this worked for me. Why don't you give it a try? Yeah. And he told him, turn to Psalms 23. And he read Psalms 23. And the guy seen him the next day, he said, it was the most peaceful night of rest I've ever had. Yeah. So I've never experienced anything like it. I began to feel something that I've never felt before. But he said, these two men found that getting peace of mind isn't complicated. You merely feed your mind with thoughts that cause it to be peaceful. To have a mind full of peace, merely fill it full of peace. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I don't know about it. Because you're like, no, no. But what if, Brandon? What if truly that's it? Yeah. Of all else that we try, of all else that we do, what if it is just, I'm just going to open his word, and I'll spend an hour in it. Yeah. Five minutes in it, 30 minutes in it. Maybe it's just one verse. I don't know. But what yeah. if it's that simple? Yeah. 
And uh, I think that that's um, one of those things you, you've seen the commercials, uh, 30 days, money back guarantee. What do you have to lose? <laughs> it's kind of same sense here. You know, like a lot of times with dealing with the mind, a lot of times you hit rock bottom. And whenever you hit rock bottom and you have no idea how close you are to God. And um, it's like, man, I have nothing else. I have nothing to lose when I give it a try. And maybe you're listening to this and you're kind of at that point. I don't have anything to lose. What's it going to hurt? What's yeah. it going to hurt? This, and, and trust me, listen, I, I've tried a lot of stuff. I've tried um, even like going to bed, like watching the positive stuff. I've tried just taking walks. I've tried all these things. And while the things help, I, I can tell you right now, I experience more peace in God's word for that time than I do with anything else. Yeah. Uh, as someone who has dealt with these things uh, and walking through them, it's um, it's game changing. And I know it sounds simple, um, but it sometimes getting back to the basics, it works. Mm -hmm. And there's something important about replacing it because a lot of times, yeah. even the walks and doing the things that you enjoy, it's just a cover up and a feel good moment because of the feelings that you have kind of going back to you eating something sweet. Right. And we do that to cover up a lot of times. But um, what's beautiful about the Bible is the Bible uncovers. Yeah. It, yeah. it says, okay, well, this is really it. Hey, listen, and it kind of, one thing that I found beautiful about the Bible is these, these deep rooted things. It shows you how simple it is to remove them and replace them. Right. If that makes sense. Like right. it, it may seem hard and it may be hard and difficult, but it's simple things that take time. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that about the Bible as well, though. And as you begin to see is that I love how that even through disbelief, God still moves. Yeah. And it's like, it's from those experiences with him where you're like, oh, that, like, I, I do feel free now. Yeah. Like, what is that? Yeah. Is, dude, there's there's power in replacing our lives with those truths. And yeah. we begin to see those. But but it's only through experience. And I think for me and, you know, people that, you know, of faith, it's just a reminder of, like, you need to get back to the basics. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you've been trying all these other things. Are yeah. you driven or you're trying to work it out or whatever it may be? And it's just like, no, you just need to open up God's word and begin to rest in those truths yeah. um, and do that. That's a big one. Feed your mind. And yeah. we ask you, just give the Bible a try. Yeah. Give it a try. Number four is a big one uh, that I think a lot of us aren't necessarily aware mm -hmm. of, but it's really, really true, is uh, talk peaceful to be peaceful. This is a extremely, extremely tough one. And I'll even say it, man, like for our area, for our region, dude, it is, um, it's, it's even worse right now. And here's the one thing that changed. I mean, in all honesty, in this area, in Kentucky in general, unless you live in Lexington and Louisville, you probably voted one way. Yeah. And the person in office is not the way that you necessarily voted. Yeah. And even from a political side of things, it's like peaceful conversations don't really exist just because of that one fact. Mm -hmm. It's doom and gloom. Even from the church standpoint, it's like they lost all hope that God's still in control, that yeah. God's still moving, and that God's yeah. still working. You know what I mean? There's yeah. just different aspects where it's like it isn't peaceful right now. No. Even the media, it's not peaceful. Get away from politics and even just – there's just not a whole lot of peaceful conversations that happen. Yeah. So whenever your non-peaceful conversations happen, what do you begin to feel? Anxious. Yeah. Nervous. You worked up. Worked up. <laughs> yeah. Angry. Completely opposite yeah. of what peace brings. Um, it's not good. It's yeah. Not good. I know that that's one thing my my dad stopped doing that he that he had to stop doing was he used to watch the news every night before bed. Yeah. And, and there's so much negativity on the news that um, it just puts a damper on it and puts a damper on your mind that you go to bed worried, stressed, and not hopeful. And um, I think you need to ask yourself, where's your hope coming from? Yes. Like, like yes. what you were talking about of, man, Jesus is still on the throne. That's like, right. He's still in control. Do you believe it? Do you trust him? And um, if where are, do you have your hope in him? Yeah. Uh, or is it in all these things that fail? Uh, we talked about it last time. Man, people are going to fail you. Yeah, they Systems are, are going to fail you. Things yeah. are going to fail you. All the tissues are going to fail exactly. you, right? Jesus never will. That's right. But I think that we put our hope in the wrong place, 
And because of where our hope is, we've lost peace. Yeah. So absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I love this, this idea too, that you do like, um, <laughs> like unhappy expectation, wherever you begin with that, like even at the start of the day, do that tone just goes all the way through on or throughout. Um, and so the, the, the challenge is, I think for all of us, even within conversations that you're just having about your workplace or about your friendships or all those things, man, they can turn negative so, so quickly and it leads to not not being filled with peace. Um, so the challenge is for both of us, man, watch the manner of speech. Um, and then if we want to develop a peaceful mind, then we have to fill our personal and group conversations with positive, happy, optimistic, satisfying expressions. Yeah, I know I talked about it. Man, it's been a while back now. We've been doing it over 30 episodes. Yeah. Come on. But it's been a while back that I talked about it. But I, I talked about how I would, I used to and still do sometimes. I'm working on it. I'm still growing. I'm walking through it with y'all. But uh, I used to talk really negatively about myself. And I had a practice for every negative thing. I had to say three positives. Yeah. And it really helped replace yeah. the negative in my life and realize, man, Okay. It, okay. I'm not that bad. <laughs> but even within your day, uh, one practice that I try to do every single week, and uh, I'm not the best at uh, doing it every day, even though I should, but um, I try to write down the negative things that have happened in that day and then write out the positives. And I'm telling you, 99.9% .9 of the time, I, I mean, yeah. it's hard to say not 100 because I can't think of one, but there's more positives that happen. Yeah, there's more positives oh, than the negative, but absolutely. we like to to make the negative so much bigger than what it is, and the negativity fills our mind. Absolutely. And whenever you fill your mind with those positive things, that's whenever you'll receive the peaceful things as well. Absolutely, um, and that really leads into into our next point and saturate your thoughts with peaceful experiences. And I love what you just said there because it's like that that's one of the most important things that we can do is that we get caught up in the moment, but you're still looking back. It's like, man, there's been a lot of good, a yeah. lot of cool things or, you know, in, and for believers especially, dude, God's moved. And it's like, well, he's done it then. So like, let's have peace. He's going to do it now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's the, it's just taking time. Like what you said, to write them down or just even to have your minds just, dwell on those experiences that you have had that have been extremely positive throughout your life whether yeah. there's been a lot or little yeah they still have profound profound um, impacts on our life yeah sure. i think i think we live in a culture that has bled over into how we live is that we criticize so much more than celebrate and we just got out of celebrate the day and talking about that and if you haven't checked it out man i encourage you to um, because I was the first to talk about, man, I criticized a lot before I would celebrate. And mm -hmm. I, that's something that I've even uh, challenged myself and worked on here uh, more recently throughout the uh, series. And like you said, man, it's helping us. <laughs> but yeah. is we need to take time to celebrate. Celebrate the things that God has done for us. But so often we like to criticize how the day's gone instead of thanking God for another day. Yeah. And uh, that perspective will really... Mm -hmm. Um, help you and occupy your mind with the right things. Yes, and then taking what we we talked about last week that if God is for us, yeah, who can be against us, exactly. man? Who can be against us? So never forgetting that truth that God is with us and God is here. That alone can bring us peace. But it's the experiences that are the reminder that God has been with us and God is still there. Number six, this one is going to be like, wait, what? Dude, this one's so countercultural, so countercultural. A daily practice of silence. Mm. A daily practice of silence. So we're talking about 15 minutes, 30 minutes, dude, in a 24 hours. Don't talk, don't write, don't read, don't listen to music. Think as little as possible. What do you think about that? Isn't that crazy? I've done it. Have you? I've you done it done in this? the office. I've really? done it in the office a couple of times. Uh, I, in the car, sometimes if I'm not podcasting, I'll just li like, I'm fine. Just sitting in the silence, um, outside with my boys, I've done it, but really it's like, it, it takes being very, very, very intentional. And then like setting up even, even like roadblocks, oh, I would yeah. say, 
Oh, yeah. Because what I've noticed, whenever I try to like do a daily practice of silence, I'll put my phone away or I'll say, oh, let's take the, I won't even do that. No, I'll just say, all right, for the next 15 minutes, let's just chill here. Let's just rest. Let's just think. Mm-hmm. Get a buzz. Mm-hmm. Then you get a ding. And then before you know it, you're checking your phone or you're doing this or you're doing, you know what I mean? It's just like, dude, the world in which we live does not, is not inclined for you to be silent in yeah. any way. See, I, I was like that as well. And I, I don't do it as much now, but I used to do it. I got on a um, pretty heavy practice there where I used to do this a lot. And I would put my phone in my car. Yeah. And I, so I put it up because I was doing that. And it caused more stress because I was like, what if someone needs me? And I'm ignoring them. Yeah. And something's <laughs> yeah. going on. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to put my phone up. Yeah. And I put my phone up. So I used to put my phone up and do that and sit outside by myself and yeah, i'm gonna sound crazy here but i used to even think about what i was gonna think about to slow down my thoughts yeah Be like all right so what are you even <laughs> thinking right now because how often do our thoughts control us though uh, I guess. To where it's like they go everywhere and it's yeah. like why am i where, even thinking that? where are we at yeah, yeah why am i even thinking that and yeah but like yeah it's it's so hard it's so hard. I encourage you after this, if you're driving right now, you're going to work, try it. It's harder than yeah, what you would think. It, it is. is tough. I mean, we're talking 15 minutes here. Now, what we miss, and this is where, um, man, Americans and really the whole West, I would say the whole world by this point for the majority, um, is that, man, people are just not skilled in this practice at all. Yeah. We, aren't, we aren't skilled in this no, practice. No. Uh, a guy named Thomas Carlisle, he said, Silence is the element in which great things fashion themselves. And really the generation of Americans, we really have missed it, missed something that our forefathers knew and which helped them condition, you know, their character. And man, that's the silence of the great forests or the silence of the far reaching plains. And it's like, whenever you start looking at those two aspects, what it really means is that, dude, you are so in tune with nature. You were so a part of, of the heartbeat and the rhythms of the world. You know what I mean? Like yeah. sun went down and then like you went to bed, sun came up and then you rose with it. You know, there's yeah. rhythms that you were even in tune and there weren't the distractions or the, uh, the constant connection. You know, all those things are like, they, they t- take away from it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Tough. That one's tough, man. It's that really was tough. Hard. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be looking at daily practice of silence. I mean, I think we're and once again, as you're hearing, is like we are getting this stuff fresh too in our own lives. We're like, yeah, I need that. I need that. And I need time and space um to oh, be I'm disconnected. Be, I'm gonna be doing it today. I'm not joking. It challenges me. I know. It's like I'm whoa. with you. Yeah, whoa. 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And then number seven, the last one, how do we find peace? How do we occupy our mind with peace? And really, this one is um, going to connect with so many of us, and even is connected with me in a great way, is find forgiveness. Now, there's two parts of this. We believe find forgiveness from God, find forgiveness of, of maybe things that you have done, you know, Frequently, people are lacking in inner peace. They're victims of some sort of self-punishment mechanism that they put within their own lives. And so find forgiveness from God. But this is one of the most important ones. Find forgiveness for yourself. Yeah. Forgive yourself. We all make mistakes. We have all had experiences where we have you know, this, this horrible time in our life, but there's a sense of guilt that can absolutely haunt us. Yeah. And we want to be free of that today. Yeah. Free, free of that. Yeah, it, it'll really, uh, it'll bound you. It, it really will. It, mm-hmm. it will bound you, the the unforgiveness. Um, and I like the, uh, the unforgiveness even of yourself. Uh, yeah. We hold on to that. We hold on to our burdens and uh, and, and all of our shame. And um, we forget uh, that Jesus um, died not only for our past, but also our present and future sins. Like yeah. we, we forget that they were all future to him yeah. and that he knew what we were going <laughs> right. to do. And like, right. and so it, it's one of those things where um, I think a lot of the time that we, the reason we are so disappointed in ourselves and don't forgive ourselves is because we believe God's disappointed in us yeah. and we've let God down. And, um, it, and, and, Hopefully this uh, helps some of you all free the of the lie that you, maybe you're believing. It was one that I uh, have believed for so long, and I heard it, and it 
it radically changed my life was that um, you can't disappoint God. I was like, what? What do you mean you can't disappoint God? Like, that you can definitely disappoint God. Like, honestly, like I was listening and I was like, yeah, yeah you can't. Like, what do you mean? And, um, uh, and I, I'll never forget it. And, um, it's one thing that I talk about a lot because it radically changed my life that much was that to disappoint God, you'd have to catch him off guard. Yeah. And you can't. <laughs> he, he already knows and he's not yeah. going to look at you and be like, hey, I'm so disappointed in you. He already knew it and he still died for you. Yeah. And I, I think that, um, one of the reasons why we are so disappointed in ourselves is because we believe God's disappointed on in us and we believe that lie, but replace that lie with the truth and that, hey, no, um, God's not disappointed in you, um, yeah. but instead he poured out his grace upon you and he forgives you. And you know the saying that hurting people hurt people. Uh, well, I believe forgiving people forgive people. Yeah. And that includes yourself. Yeah. And, um, and sometimes we need to forgive ourselves. And, um, and let go of some of the shame and guilt that we're carrying and uh, really experience that peace that the Bible talks about is, that is beyond understanding. Absolutely. And we do want to leave you once again with a verse. So there were seven things, man. They're, they're, uh, they really kind of hit home uh, to me in a lot of ways in my life. And But we want to occupy our minds with peace. And these are just some techniques. Tuck in your mind, empty your mind. And then we go to feed your mind, talk peaceful to be peaceful, saturate your thoughts with peaceful experiences, take a daily practice of silence, and then the last one, find forgiveness. And our verse for this week that resonate with, continue to memorize it, spend some time dwelling on this truth, that peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So this episode, ma'am, this week, we are occupying our mind with peace. That's right. Another episode. Thank you so much for joining us again for another episode of The Monday Mindset. May this week, may you occupy your mind with peace.